Hello and welcome back to Life on the Wrist. Today we're going to be looking at, as always, a vintage watch. We're going to be looking at this really uncommon reference, 1116, manufactured by Longines in 1962. It's an uncommon reference that um, was difficult to research. Uh, the reference doesn't seem to show up too, too often. It also has a fairly uncommon linen dial, which when you think of all the dials that Longines produced, was on the lower end of things when it comes to production numbers. And so I'm very excited to get into this reference with you, show you something a little bit uncommon. There's also an interesting dedication on the case back of this watch, which is also a little bit fleeting, uh, both uh, in the individual and the company that, uh, that, that this watch um, was gifted from. So excited to jump into this watch, its reference, its history, and of course it's story. So um, without further ado, let's get into it. Uncommon dials are all the craze with watch collectors. It is an added layer of intrigue where a watch company decided to deviate from the normal path of a specific reference. This, there's some exclusivity to uncommon dials as well, because being uncommon means rarity, and rarity is something every collector is chasing for their collection. The Longines today is a bit of an enigma. It's a reference 1116 based on its case back inscriptions. After a ton of research, there doesn't seem to be too many mentions of this specific re reference, which I actually find quite cool. Even cooler is the fact that it features a linen dial. Longines has produced other watches with linen dials in the past, so it's not uncommon for the brand. You can see them in some of their models of the flagships that they produced. But it's still an exci it's, it's, it still is exciting to find it in a reference that doesn't seem to be too common. We'll go into the dial a little bit more later. So based on the serial number for this reference 1116, the watch was manufactured in 1962. The watch is an example of how Longines did business during this time in the US market. It was sold by the Longines Wittnauer Group, or the Longines Wittnauer Watch Company that operated out of New York and Montreal. The company's name is engraved on the inside case back. Whitnar was a successful brand in the USA and was acquired by Longines in 1950, just after World War II, where they became a distribution partner for Longines. In 1969, Longines Whitnauer was sold to Westinghouse Electric Corporation and in 1994, Longines ended their distribution relationship with Whitnauer. But during their partnership, Many different models hit the market that are of interest to collectors today. There is an additional inscription on the case back, as well as up here, um, where it describes what the case is made out of. It's a logo and stamp that says SW. SW was Schwab and Wuspart case company. Schwab and Wuspart was founded between the 1920s and 1930s and was located in Manhattan in New York City. They were originally located across the street from the UN building, which is quite interesting, but then later relocated to Woodside, New York. They manufactured cases for companies like Hamilton, Elgin, Longines, Gerard Pergo, and Rolex, and also Patek Philippe, interestingly. They ended up um, closing their doors in 1963. So this watch is a 33 millimeter, 10 karat gold filled cased piece. The case is fairly thin, as you can see um, from its profile, and has this sort of bubble, bubble back, um, which allows the movement to slot into the case quite nicely. Interestingly, it actually doesn't have a case back. What you have to do is you have to pop the crystal off the watch and then lift off the dial in order to get access to the movement and case back serial numbers um, and inscriptions. 
It has these really thin uh, lugs that I think look uh, very, very attractive. Oh, so apologize for the focus there. Once the movement is exposed, you can see a really beautiful caliber 370. It features the letter LXW on the balance wheel bridge, which indicates that the Longines Wittenauer company imported the movement from Switzerland to the USA market. The caliber 370 is a manual wind movement with a sub-seconds, as you can see here. Um, it has a hashed sub-seconds. And was introduced, first introduced in 1960 uh, and really replaced the Caliber 23ZS as the go-to manual wind movement used by the manufacturer. The movement has sort of a rectangular shape, really tight construction and fairly nice finishing for one of Longines in-house uh, movements. It wasn't Longines' best movement that they ever produced, but it certainly was a great movement for the range of watches and competed with a lot of uh, other brands um, during this time period, um, considering the incredible uh, construction and finishing for that piece. If we move on to the dial, the dial of the watches really has uh, has a lot to say. It has the sort of classic applied sword-shaped hour markers that match the thinner hour and minutes uh, and seconds uh, sword hands. The Longines logo is also applied and the Longines name is printed on the dial. I apologize for the uh, focus. There we go. But the main event really is what is described as a linen dial. Counter to what many people believe, a linen dial is not actually a piece of linen, typically speaking, that has been placed onto the surface of the dial. Linen dials became popular starting in the 1940s and is actually a cross-hatch engraving that a watchmaker or a machine creates on the dial of the watch, making it look like a textured surface finish. This means the dial really kind of dances in different lights, which kind of brings the watch to life, which is really nice. Um, when you're wearing it on your wrist, um, although it does sometimes make it kind of difficult to photograph. The dial is in very good condition. What you will notice is over on the right side of the dial, there is a little bit of oxidation that has occurred. This is typical for older watches that didn't use gaskets to keep moisture out of the, the watch case, um, specifically by the crown. The, the, the crown of this watch is signed with the Longines logo, um, and it's likely that there was a little bit of moisture that, that might have got, gotten into the case, creating a little bit of a different color to the, to the linen finish of this watch. Nevertheless, it's incredible to look at, uh, especially on different days, um, so that you can see how the weather and the lighting outside really affects um, what the dial ends up looking like. Turning the watch over, one can see that this watch is way more than just a combination of, uncom uh, uncommon, uh, of an uncommon reference and dial design. The gold case back has an engraved dedication to a J.A. Zonlik from Your Stanley Associates, 62863. The inscription likely points to the sale and gifting of the watch in 1963 to a J.A. Zonlik from Stanley Associates. Now, upon researching Stanley Associates, there definitely needs to be a little bit more creativity by founders to come up with more unique names. There were an extremely large amount of companies with this name, but based on where the watch was sourced and some information about the individual, it's likely that this came from a company that was based in um, Massachusetts in the USA. Unfortunately, it was um, difficult to find out a lot about the company, but there is a record and I'll put, there is a link in the, um, in the article that we'll post to our website there is a link um, where a record of a J.A. Zonlik named John A. Zonlik, um, who was part of the Building and Construction Trades Council in Northampton, Massachusetts in the USA. The Building and Construction Trade 
Rights Council represents tradesmen and tradeswomen to advance workers' rights, security, and employment, and are still active today. And there many states have them. Um, and the source that we found was from 1946, and the gifting of the watch was in 1963, so it could be some sort of retirement gift, probably not from the council, but likely from maybe the uh, company that the that um, that our friend John uh, Zonlik worked for. I I did do a little bit of research um, looking at obituaries, which is a little bit of a morbid way of researching things, but um, didn't really produce much more information. I'll let you take a look at this watch on the wrist um, because 33 millimeters might sound small, but with these fairly long lugs, it um, does lend itself to to fit um, a little bit differently than a standard 33 millimeter watch. So here you go. This is the watch on the wrist. And as you can see, this is a classic dress watch. Um, 33 millimeters is fairly small. The lugs make it sit really nicely, and to me, um, there is a little bit, I don't know if you saw it on the profile, but if you can see here, you can see how the lug sort of angles downwards, makes it sit really nicely on the wrist. And as I mentioned, the linen dial sort of plays with the night light in a really nice way. This watch is such a, is, is, such, is in such a unique place uh, when it comes to vintage watches, and in some ways is extremely fleeting. The reference is fairly rare, with very little information on it. The dial with its linen finish is mesmerizing and off the beaten path of what um, off the beaten path of, the, of what typical watch dials um, look like. And the watch's story uh, was the watch's story where it was gifted to an individual who worked for a company that is that is a very common name making it difficult to pinpoint their exact information. This really points the idea that, you know, rarity can come in so many different forms um, and can embody so many different parts of a vintage watch. And I think that is why so many of us uh, love to find uncommon and rare vintage watches. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this fairly uncommon reference 1116 from Longines, sold in the USA market with a beautiful linen dial and um, really uh, incredible inscription on the case back. Um, it's a it's a it's a watch that I think embodies everything when it comes to uh, you know a tradition that was fairly common um, in the 60s, in I'd say the 40s, the 60s, where individuals would be gifted watches by their companies um, to celebrate, let's say, a retirement. I do also think that the rarity of this piece adds uh, a little bit of an allure, um, a reference that isn't very common, a dial that isn't very common. It all sort of adds up to, to a pretty cool, um, pretty cool vintage watch, and I think that's one of the reasons why I really do love this piece. As I mentioned, there will be an article um, on our website where you can see some of the things that I have mentioned from source material, so I highly recommend you check out our article on lifeinthenurse.com. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this piece. And my question for today is, do you like linen dials? I feel like they're kind of hit or miss for many people, but I do think the rarity is something to be said. That there's something to be said about the rarity of the pieces. As always, if you wouldn't mind sharing this video with a friend who might be interested in watches, it really would help me out. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and like this video um, if you like this content. With that said, guys, I can't wait for the next um, sort of lineup of watches. We've now covered all the pieces that we went through in that initial video that we that we um, that we uh, posted. So we're going to have some new pieces in um, to discuss. So looking forward to that, and I can't wait to dive into some more uh, vintage watches with you. With that said, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and until next time.